The mic is on. We are good to go. Here's my hand. Uh, <laughs> I can't do anything. For, I can put my foot up. There it is. <laughs> so, Cole, we are talking about The Green Knight, probably yes. the most divisive fantasy movie of 2020, and probably a few years before that. You yep. watched it today. I watched it last night. Last night. And I feel divided today. You feel divided? <laughs> okay. I do. I feel divided. What? So on a scale, of, could, could you one to, scale, one to ten scale it for me? All right, so just overall. Mm -hmm. Overall, as an experience, mm -hmm. I would say watching The Green Knight is like a seven. Seven. I'll okay. give it a seven. We're in the same ballpark. I'm at like an 8.59. Oh, really? I'm that high. Wow, you really liked it. I am a pretentious asshole. Okay. So this falls into my pretentious asshole category <laughs> flawlessly. All right. Um, I think it did a wonderful job of finding the balance of actually telling the story of the Green Knight, which I don't know if mm -hmm. you've read that, mm -hmm. and still like being a modern movie. There's a lot of like middle ground, especially when it comes to the structure that I think didn't work out perfectly. Uh -huh. Like it's a weirdly structured movie. I yeah. You can like agree with that. Yes, I was confused at times for sure as as to like the timeline. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, and, there's and multiple points around. where he's like aging and dying, but he doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> the only time that made sense is the one scene where the camera slowly panned in a circle, and then it showed him dead, and then it panned back, so you can kind of like feel the time going one way, and then they brought time back, and that. So watching that, I was like, okay, I can see what's happening here, but a lot of the a lot of the film, it seemed like they would show possibilities yeah you know what i mean and they would go down this possibility route and my problem was i had no background like i like you read the book i did not so going into this i had no idea what to expect and well, it took me a while to figure out that it's just like a mythical adventure pretty much yeah. because like the context of this the green knight was basically a tale from a like i think it's right around the time that like prose became a thing like they, people didn't mm. write stories in that way and the okay. green knight was like boring so the fact that it's not like structured in a traditional modern story to me just means it's telling the story of the green knight kind of right yeah because stories back then were kind of just like there's a premise and then shit happens and then it's over and that's mm -hmm. kind of just like how arthurian tales happen so it felt very true in that sense how did you feel about the tone i really liked the tone i like that they took their time mm -hmm. i like that they set up moments to just show the beauty of the story because the visuals in this movie were fucking fantastic i mean yeah, freaking fantastic sorry <laughs> but i i like that they took their time and they allowed moments to breathe mm -hmm. and allowed you to have the time you need to draw your interpretation of what was happening because yeah. i feel like if it was that sort of all over the place and it didn't give you time to think about it draw you know um draw realizations whatever then i would have just been lost the whole time but those quiet slow moments sometimes it would just be a shot of like the trees rustling and and they give you a moment to think about what just happened you know? it's genuinely haunting too yeah 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 so in terms of that tone, I love how immersed I felt, and it really felt like an epic world to me. Like, there's this mm -hmm. long shot of him just going down a country road and, like, just children chasing him. Just, like, I, I think of it as, like, day-in-the-life shots, mm -hmm. where you're just totally seeing, like, this is just the world existing around this person, and I, I'm obsessed with that. But my biggest criticism of the movie, and this is what keeps it from being a 10 to me, is, like they always last a beat too long. And I get that they're trying to, mm -hmm. but they, they do these like tone setting world shots and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. Now I could have peed. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, no, no, I totally agree. And that's my only reservation with the, like establishing that specific tone is like there were moments where I could have closed my eyes, you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, that is an effect, too, mm -hmm. that the film is bringing to you. But um, watching it late at night, some of those moments definitely dragged a little bit. Um, and I, I, I was expecting a bit more action, actually. Yes. There wasn't much action, and I was kind of like waiting for that. Again, I had no knowledge going into this of what to expect. But the Green Knight here, Green Knight, and then the first scene, one of the first scenes is head going. So um, I thought there's going to be a bit more like fighting or something in here, but no, it's just a bunch of like quiet, beautiful shots. Well, that, that gets into the actual story. I think we need to 
before you probably should have started talking about yeah. the actual story here. But like, so the premise basic setup is King Arthur's court, and it feels like mm -hmm. a very late stage King Arthur's court. Like mm -hmm. it's all established. You get all this insanely religious imagery, um, a giant cathedral, and the introduction is the introduction to uh, the main character, uh, who's played by Dev Patel. And he, he plays the character, I think, fantastically. And it yeah. actually has one of the best character introduction scenes I've ever seen. Like, I love how quickly you get a grasp on who he is as a character through this mad dash from sleeping with this woman to mm -hmm. going into King Arthur's court he goes through. It's and just, that was in a brothel, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. And it, it, it sets a pacing and a tone that the movie does not follow through on because it's <laughs> so, like, we're going to get there. Blah, blah, blah. And then you get to, like, King Arthur's court and the movie just stops. Um, and then the Green Knight comes in, and I didn't expect it to be creepy, but it's genuinely creepy. It was creepy. Yeah, yeah. and the sound design is, I think, carrying like 80% of that. Oh, the scoring was amazing. Yeah. I, I thought, I mean, without, I actually had that thought as I was watching the movie, I was watching some of the scenes, and, you know, not much is happening, but, like, the visuals coupled with the, the score, yes. like, really delivered the tone. Yeah. With the, those two things, really carried the film. I yeah. And I thought after the Green Knight scene where he accepts the challenge and he cuts off the Green Knight's head and yeah. then the Green Knight puts the head back on, uh, I thought, okay, now the movie's going to pick up again. But it doesn't. It doesn't mm -hmm. pick up. Like, it has this fast intro and then it stops and then it just crawls towards its end. But that's why I love it. And I can understand though why so many people have a problem with it. Because it's like I see people, I even to myself in my own review of this drew a comparison to um, like Marvel movies. I'm like, if you're trying to expect Captain America to go into this, you're not gonna have a good time. Yeah. But even less generously, if you go in expecting like Lord of the Rings pacing, it's still monumentally slower than that, yeah. structured entirely differently. And that's because from here, it just goes to a bunch of little vignettes, just little stories taking place. Well, I was gonna say that kind of reminds me of World of Warcraft. Yeah. And doing quests. Like when he he <laughs> met that ghost yeah. and it was like, oh, you meet this ghost. You got to go dive into the pond and retrieve her head so she can rest in peace. And like that just screams like World of Warcraft quest to me. So yep. I feel like in a way it was just a, a movie full of quests a, within this story of the big quest. I, I liked. I liked that part. Never thought of that. And you are absolutely <laughs> right. This is the most Warcraft structured movie <laughs> yeah. ever to exist. But let's, like, I want to talk about the Dev Patel's character. Mm -hmm. Do you think his character had an arc? Or do you think shit just happened to him? I was trying to figure that out the whole time. And where I landed is, I don't think he would have first volunteered to play the game with the Green Knight if, yep. if he didn't want to change something. Mm -hmm. So something about his character he wanted to change. And it makes sense because King Arthur was like, come sit beside me. You know, I want you to like, I want to groom you to be the next yeah. king or whatever. And, uh, and you know, a couple scenes earlier, he's coming from the brothel. So obviously, <laughs> if you want to become that king, you got to change something. So I think that's why he stepped up to the Green Knight's game. Mm -hmm. And then I think the there was a bit of an arc because at the end of the film, he did like the brave thing, the mm -hmm. King Arthur kind of thing to do. However, at the end of the film with the cliffhanger, it was like... Did he actually get his head chopped off or not? I mean, that would kind of ruin the whole arc because you made your arc, time to die. Yeah, you know? it's it's interesting because in the actual book, um, mm -hmm. the actual reveal at the end of the book is that it's all been a joke on him. Of course, he's not mm -hmm. going to get his head cut off. And he's basically told like, hey, you did the brave thing. Go home. You're worthy. Yeah. But the movie ends in a way where it's hinting at that ending, but still the last thing the Green Knight says is, and now I'm going to cut your head off and then it yeah. just hard cuts to done off with the head <laughs> right and so you're like i wasn't sure if he just hadn't revealed that it's a joke yet or if no in this version of the story he's mm -hmm. going to get murdered i'm really yeah. not sure i got hung up on why he cut the green knight's head off in the first place mm -hmm. and i say that because he came in it was a game that was established right after he volunteered king arthur came up and said remember it's just a game Mm -hmm. And then he goes up and cuts this person's head off. <laughs> who, who does that in a game? <laughs> and the rules were established. If you cut someone's head off, you're going to get your head cut off. So it's like, it's almost his fault in a way. 
that all this happened. In the in the book, it's more overt that King Arthur does, but I think it's hinted that King Arthur does with his interaction with Dev Patel's mother. I can't remember the character's name. Okay. <laughs> I'm probably yeah. bad. Uh, Gawain, Sir Gawain. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Sir Gawain and... Sharkhand. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um, so I, I found it very interesting that the movie took the time to include a part of the story that is fundamental to that ending where it does turn out to be a game because we have him go to this like weekend estate and the reveal i think this if i'm remembering this right the green knight's actually the guy whose estate he's staying at that's oh. actually the green knight and because i thought that while well, i was watching the movie i was like i bet this is the dude what's well, the same actor it is yeah they're planting that in your head oh and so i wasn't because the green knight looks so not human i'm still not sure what they're going for there because like is it yeah. him is it not but you look the, like a white walker to me yeah, a, a green walker. Green walker, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, it, it thematically worked for me. And I'm a very, like, theme-based story person. And mm -hmm. especially, like, if you resolve your themes, resolve your character arc, you can just drop a plot. I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I feel like you're not quite in that taste. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. need more of a whole story resolution? Yeah, okay. I think I do. But I, I enjoy that. Um, again, I think it was just how I came into the film. Because, like, I didn't expect, like, the side stories that might not have, like, a clear, like, purpose in the story. But, like, the more I think about it and the more we talk about it, I'm enjoying it more. Like, the speculation and the interpretation. You know it's not going to be a true-to-the-telling story, and I guess I should have known that. Because there's a scene where he takes mushrooms and starts hallucinating. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like, the scene where he's taking the mushrooms, like, his Oh, yeah, that part. And he just sees yeah. the green knight in front of him, and I'm like, is that real, or is that not yeah. real? I didn't I was know. asking myself that throughout the whole film. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is this whole thing a hallucination? Like, like, when the giant hand came over the mountain, I was like, is that real? And then they ran over, and then the fox talked to the giant... And then they just walked away. That whole sentence you just said out of context <laughs> makes it seem like you took mushrooms. <laughs> I felt like it. I felt like it. So, okay, to get through a couple more of the important plot points, he dies, and then it, like, rewinds and undoes his death. And it's a very visual representation of, like, he could give up at this point, he could stop fighting, and he would die. But you mm -hmm. see, it, like, rewinds time, and he decides to instead fight. He gets out of what he's going through. And he eventually earns his axe back. And he earns it through... He gets it back by saving... Or taking the woman's head into the pond, correct? Yeah, once he, like, finished that quest, that was his quest reward. Was somehow getting the, the axe, axe back, <laughs> which makes... No sense. <laughs> no, it, it makes sense in a fantasy world where giants are being yelled at by foxes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll suspend my Yeah, I get it. Um, but I, I don't know. For, so, it's... I, I, I think... And not to sound like a pretentious asshole, but it's you already said you were. So. I, it's fair. It's something a lot of modern audiences are going to struggle with because it doesn't have a clear cut villain. Yeah, it doesn't have a clear cut overarching narrative. It's just a bunch of side quests that lead to an end result. It doesn't have like logical connections from A to B throughout. Mm -hmm. But the way it's shot, right. have... anybody would draw. Some, I feel like anybody could draw some enjoyment from it from just the beauty. And yeah. the score. I mean, that that alone. See, like the score much. didn't stand out to me as much. I need to go back and watch it and pay oh, more attention. The score to was huge for me. It's huge. Oh yeah, I do that. It, I think it, it drove the the plot in ways. Also, just like you could tell, you know, the emotion of Sir Gawain just from the score. You mm -hmm. know what was happening. But my, my man, Sir Gawain's not making some good decisions. No. No. Which bad it, decisions. Which we need to talk about Dave Patel's perform Dev Patel's but, performance mm -hmm. um, because he. He portrays what I found to be a very mature fool, is the way I would put mm -hmm. it. He's not doing anything that is overtly harming others, but he is an idiot. He's incompetent. Yeah, and he's young. <laughs> and I, I just found he was like the perfect choice for the role. I think he delivered an earnestness to it that made me love him, even when he was being a jackass. Yeah, I agree. I, I really liked his performance. Um, he has a great way of just like looking. <laughs> yeah, like half his performance was like looking at things strangely, <laughs> like us watching the film. Um, I thought I thought he did really well. He brought so much um, character to the character throughout the movie. You could tell uh, you could tell exactly who he was. He was someone figuring. Sh 
it out. <laughs> that's you the know? right way to put it. Yeah. Which is a good stand-in for the audience because that's what you're trying to do the entire <laughs> movie. <laughs> I, yeah, I related to him because I was like, man, we're in this together. <laughs> we're both figuring this out as we go. Well, okay, so when it comes down to the end of it, what do you think happened when the camera cut to black? Do you think he was killed? Do you think he was revealed to be a game? What's your interpretation? I think the Green Knight goes to chop the head off and then has a good laugh about it and then goes back to his stupor on his throne. Okay, so you're going that's, with the original ending. Yes, I suppose, okay. yeah. Okay, that's I, very fair. Because I, I just really feel like the whole movie would be for naught, the whole journey would be for naught if his head was cut off. Yeah. Because you just went on this life-changing journey. Let's cut off your head. You didn't learn. You, whatever you learned doesn't matter. You're dying. Well, there's a there's a, a little bit of fun behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, the director essentially recut the movie before release. So mm -hmm. there was uh, an original cut, and the director said he was in a horrible mind space when he did that cut. And it made the movie worse. So then he recut it, and apparently it changed a lot. Um, with the flow of the movie and I don't of course you don't get to know specifically what but my big wonder to me it feels like that shot wasn't meant to be an end because it is so abrupt it doesn't feel like it was meant to stop I mean there's not even yeah. really a beat to like let the line hit you it's just I'm gonna kill you now done there's right right end. the director well <laughs> this was the director's recut but the longer version so I want to ask you I'm curious um, so his love interest at the beginning of the movie, from the brothel, I suppose. Um, he he likes her. She gives him the little bell to take on his journey. Mm -hmm. And then at the castle with the man and the woman, who he was not allowed to engage with, um, was played by the same character. Yeah. I'm sure that was intentional. Mm -hmm. What do you think that was trying to deliver to the audience? Well, there's a very big focus on image in this movie. I mean, there's literally the painting with him. Um, there's all this art of King Arthur and it's stuff. A very haunting painting. Yeah, very haunting painting. And then we have the actors being used again and again. The Green Knight mm -hmm. actor, that actress. And so I think it was more, at least my interpretation, it was about he's viewing these people in a similar light. So he's viewing this woman who was a seductress to him in the manor He's, his attraction to her is a mirror of the attraction of the woman he was already sleeping with back in where he came from. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was just a, the movie giving you a visual representation. And the guy in the manor was this big imposing figure. Mm -hmm. And he knew he was kind of towards the end of his quest. The guy literally told him like, hey, the Green Knight's just right down there. Take your load off. You can chill here for a bit. And I think because of that, it's more from the character's perspective, seeing the people as the same thing. Because he's at the end of his objective, he knows he's there. So of course the owner of the manor he's at looks like the person he's going to. Mm -hmm. um, I could be totally up my own ass, but that's just my interpretation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think, I want to say the actress who played his mom also voiced the fox. But I could be Oh wrong. really? I could be wrong on that. Don't, I'll have a thing on the screen that tells me if I'm full of shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> that would, that, that would shock me. If really? like there's supposed to be a connection, because I feel like, well, oh, let me back up, because the mom, the mom confuses me. I yeah. don't know if she's a benevolent character or a ma malevolent character. Her whole tone and energy is kind of sinister. To yeah, me. It, she. It, it's funny. There's like a brief bit of uh, interaction between her and King Arthur, and the vibe I got between them isn't like they're allies. It's like they're just people who have agreed to not go to war with each other. If yeah. that makes sense, they, they didn't both feel respect like... respect each other. I didn't know, like, was she controlling King Arthur? Because it seemed like they had this ritual where she was, like, mouthing what King Arthur was saying when the Green Knight appeared. I'm not sure. <laughs> because if that's the case, that would be awkward because she might have had a feeling her son would step up and then have to go through all this crap. But it confuses me because maybe she did want that to happen, so she somehow... I think she did. Yeah, okay. I think she so was she, manipulating the situation to get it to happen. But if she wanted it to happen, and she's voicing the fox, and they're supposed to be, like, synonymous characters, then why would the fox try to stop him from completing his journey? Because when he was about to get on that boat to go down to the Green Knight's Chapel, the fox was like, don't do it. Right. I, 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 I agree. Um, so maybe it wasn't voiced by the same person, but I also feel like the point of the journey was for him to keep going no matter what got in his way. And so I feel like this representation of having a one final... Well, by the way, I have no idea what the, f the purpose of the fox was. I, don't know. I really don't either. It just it's came so in and it was the weakest CG of the whole movie. The, the movie looked great except yeah. for that fox. That fox suddenly 
would go wrong. Didn't quite work. Yeah. Yeah, but the fox, I feel like there there should have been more to the fox. I was getting Gollum vibes the whole time with the fox. Just <laughs> like... I never got Gollum vibes, but interesting take. I just like Just following him along, and they're trying to, like, get rid... He was trying to get rid of the fox for a little while, and then just eventually, like, okay, be my friend, and then they were, like, instantly friends. But... Did, he, when did, the, did the fox show up pre- or post-mushroom trip? <laughs> Post. Post? Post mushroom. Mushroom. Okay. Yeah. It's all a blur of mushroom trip. <laughs> it's a mushroom trip blur. It feels like the movie was cut out of order and that like rainy mushroom trip night should have been the first night and then just justify everything that happens afterward. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one, the only final thing I really wanted to hit on, was there anything in the movie that stood out to you? was like, this is hmm. the, the short vignette that you liked the most. I enjoyed his time at the manor the most. Really? Yeah. Okay. What I liked was, it. Was it just the intrigue of what was happening? I I loved the interplay between the three characters. This person was expecting him uh, because they had just like heard about the whole the game, and then he's like treating him with kindness, but he's also like, don't mess around. And then meanwhile, the wife is like courting him in a very aggressive, like dark way, which was interesting. You know um, it's going to be the best sex of your life, but you know you <laughs> should not do it. <laughs> yeah. And and the way that she ended up doing that like awkward handy and then afterward looked at him and was like, you are no knight. I was like, oh, man. I think that that was a really like integral line to like the message. You can tell it like shattered his world by the way he reacted yeah. to it. Like he felt like a failure in that moment. Yeah. And it's interesting because he said earlier in the film that he was not a knight. Yeah. When, when the vagabonds robbed him, he's like, oh, I'm not a knight. You said I was a knight. I'm not a knight. Mm -hmm. But then she said, you're not a knight. And he was like devastated. I didn't pick up on that. That's, that's a really good observation. Yeah. I didn't pick up on that. So like in his head, and that's why I think he did this whole thing, is because he wanted to prove himself. He wanted that honor. He wanted to be the lofty, you know, Arthur, Arthurian knight. And then uh, she was like, Nah, he just came on this sash. <laughs> <laughs> and is there is there a point where a guy's more down and bad where he's just finished and That's a woman the... <laughs> says you're not a knight? <laughs> yeah, very quickly too. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's so funny. So I would say my favorite is actually something we haven't mentioned yet, and that's the way this movie shows time passing. Mm -hmm. There's this like little disturbing play wheel. I don't know what to describe it. That's just showing the seasons going by. And it just gets more and more sinister because, like, it starts out kind of like, okay, time's passing, but by it's it's because it's one year's time till the game he gets the return mm -hmm. blow of the head chop off, and so like that final like turning of the wheel that shows like this everyone's kind of laughing at the he's become known. I just love how well that kind of raised the stakes for everything that's going on because it mm -hmm. it wasn't it was no longer this little private thing that happened in this dining room. It's become this known tale that everyone's aware of. And so he can't escape it. Everywhere he yeah. goes, he's known as the guy who's going to go get his head chopped the f*** <laughs> <Yeah>. off. <laughs> and so I was just like, wow, that's, that's a wonderful way to kind of make everything this guy does feel like it's under a magnifying glass. Right. I love that. I, I will say the weakest part of the movie for me, though, even though it was extremely well done, uh, is that flashing into the what if he became king and ran away mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And uh, I found it that even though it was so well done, it just, I hate that. I hate what ifs <gasps> yeah. in movies. That it, it's it's like dream sequences where you see a character die, and they're not really dead. It's like you want to have that, but you're not going to earn it. It didn't feel like it was in tune with his character too. Like that yeah. what if even even if he didn't reclaim his honor by following through with the game, I don't think that he would have done the things that it showed him doing in that what if sequence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's so, very antithetical. Yeah, I can agree with that. But o overall, I mean. Talking about it, my score has raised to an eight. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. Mine's down to an eight. It's down to an eight? <laughs> we met in the middle. We met in the middle. <laughs> um, so I'm going to end this by asking you, who wouldn't you recommend this movie to? I would not recommend this movie to people who don't care for symbolism. That's a very good answer. This yeah. whole movie is so symbolic. Right. If you, if you don't enjoy drawing interpretation from something abstract, you yeah. know, you're not going to enjoy this movie. Because this movie felt more like an art piece mm -hmm. to me than a film in a way. Because we're so used to like the same formula. I would say if you're one of the people 
who when Martin Scorsese uh, pointed out the truth that all Marvel movies are essentially the same formula and mm-hmm. you got mad at that, mm-hmm. don't watch this movie. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I agree. Did, did he actually say that? Yeah, he said like Marvel movies are, he said like they're a carnival ride and there's the same thing again yeah, and again. Yeah, that's so and true. so many people were like, oh, you don't understand, you don't under- appreciate, and I'm like, no, he's 100% right. <laughs> he's right. That's the case. But people love it. Yeah, but if you like symbolism, watch The Green Knight. I will agree with that. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is fun, man. Yeah, do you want to plug your stuff? Oh, yeah. Um, me and my wife, my wife and I, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're, you're a booktuber. I got to get my grammar right. <laughs> <laughs> my wife and I, we have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, we do lifestyle vlogs. We talk about disability. I'm in a wheelchair. Um, we talk about our relationship, our adventures, all that jazz. So, yeah, check it out. It's called Roll with Cole and Charisma. My name's Cole. I, was, I thought you were going to get through that whole thing and not say the name. I almost forgot. <laughs> it was an afterthought. My name was an afterthought. Yeah, Colin, just look up Colin Cruz when you'll find it. <laughs> oh, he's big enough. He's in the algorithm now. 